The next paper is a local one, the initial experience with a jet stream atherectomy thrombectomy device, again for infrainguinal femoropopteal disease. Good evening. I'm going to speak about the initial experience with the jet stream pathway device for femoropopteal disease. We did this study at uh, Arizona Heart Institute, and the purpose of study to report the safety and efficacy of jet stream pathway rotational atherectomy and thrombectomy device for the treatment of femoropopteal arterial lesions with special emphasis on two things, rate of re-intervention and the intervention-free period. These are the demographics of the patients. The duration of this study is a retrospective review. I went into the data and uh, then got this one. Duration was March 2008 to November 2009, it was 21 months. And uh, total patients we enrolled, they were 86. And uh, 55 males and uh, 31 females. The age range is 36 to 87 years. We included nearly all the patients, including criteria, so regardless of their previous status. And end point of this study is re-intervention in the same limb after a threctomy and determine the intervention-free period. Next, I have an animated uh, video about this working of the pathway device. We put the O14 wire and then this pathway device is uh, going with the blade stone and uh, initially it aspirates. thrombus is being uh, aspirated and the path is cleared still we have not utilized the blades in this device and uh, that will be utilized in the next uh, move and it's suctioning at the same time so the all the debris in clear off Now the blades are up and it's making the pathway more wider. And at the same time, you are seeing the it is suctioning the material which is taken away from the wall of the thrombus. So going to the next, this is the real one, which we performed in the patient with the instant uh, restenosis and the stent and it's this pathway device is going to work and clear this uh, obstruction. So this was just a video now coming towards my data. It's working. Can we go forward? Excuse me. Can we go forward? Yeah. Now coming towards the clinical findings. There were total 113 lesions which we treated and uh, some patients uh, were uh, having two lesions in SFA and the popliteal and the basis of uh, the site of lesion SFA has 74 lesions, 30 were popliteal, the other vessels like iliac lesions are four, instant restenosis four cases and one case of femoropopliteal bypass. And the presentation of these patients was uh, according to claudication 58% patient, 58 patients uh, came with claudication, less pain was in 30, 13 patients and 15 patients having the tissue loss. And the limb involved mostly two thirds patient nearly left limb involved and one third in the right limb involved. Then I used, utilized the task two guidelines to classify these patients. According to these guidelines, uh, type A category of task two included 24 patients, type B included 23 patients, type C 18 patients, type D 13 patients and inconclusive in eight patients because I couldn't fight the, their videos. So I taken a, sec, a separate category to reduce my bias in the study. And uh, next are the operative findings. Occlusion, 47 patients having done occlusions and uh, stenosis was in 12 cases. And both has uh, 
12 cases. Distal runoff, the most important thing, nearly half of the patients were having 50% of the patients having single vessel runoff in these patients. And double vessel was in uh, 31 cases, triple vessel in three cases, and collaterals were only present in nine cases. These patients were follow up, and uh, most of the patient has a follow up of six to 12 months. They are st still being followed up, and uh, uh, 10 patients have very less follow up than three to six month follow up. And uh, only five patients I could find which have completed the more than uh, one year follow up. And especially we use this uh, pathway device in uh, severe popliteal lesions to avoid the stent. Because uh, at the giant, it's very difficult to have a go good potency rate for the long term with the stent. So coming towards my end point, the reintervention till the mid of January. The total 13 limbs were reintervened. And this is 15.1%. It is similar to a German study which was published in a journal of endovascular surgery, endovascular therapy in uh, December. A multi-center German study was published uh, in December issue of 2009. And uh, they also had the pretty similar uh, rate of intervention. And 13 cases uh, were equal on right and left side and timeline. The important thing is this one. Most of the re-interventions were done in the first three months of the intervention. And the types of re-intervention according to this task classification, mostly they were done in the type B uh, uh, task two classification. And very few in the only one case in the type one, type A. And the type of re-intervention which we did, we treated them balloon angioplasty and plus minus stent in six cases, nearly half of the patients, remote and arterectomy, repeat arthrectomy, and below knee amputation. So our result, TLR was 15% in patients at six months, as only 5.8% patients have completed one year. So, so this uh, follow-up is still going on. I'm uh, uh, following the patients, and I will compare them with the other modalities also, and this study will be further modified. Reintervention rate was more common in first three months after first in intervention. It may be due to the learning curve and the changes in the device made in the early part of the development of this device. Thrombectomy capabilities were essential in 16% of the cases. And adjunctive balloon angioplasty was 68%. Uh, Nearly most of the patients we did with pathway, we used the balloon angioplasty, but stent was around 7%, very few. So I conclude with this thing. The jet stream pathway device with thrombectomy and aspiration capabilities has added advantage to femoropopliteal atherectomy, number one. Second is the adjunctive stenting remains very low. In our study, it was 7% in this difficult segment. Long-term follow-up will definitely be needed for durability and patency of the lesions. So this is the end of my presentation and the highest building in the world. And still we try to go higher than that. Thanks very much for your attention.